What's going on you guys? Welcome back. If you haven't been following along, we bought this trawler for a hundred bucks in really bad shape. We spent eight months in the boatyard completely fixing up, mostly the outside, but now we just launched and we've been in the water for a bit and we're taking care of all the inside stuff, some cosmetics, Sierra made the inside galley and saloon area beautiful, and I've been working on some system stuff, and today we have to begin with the whole battery system. This boat came with two lead acid car batteries that were completely shot, garbage. We went and returned them as cores and we got two more, plus two more, and that's like our starting bank now. But we still need a solid house bank, and that's what we're gonna do today. So here's the plan. We're going with three 200 amp hour, 12 volt, Dakota lithium, lithium iron phosphate, batteries connected in parallel one of these is negative to give us 600 total amp hours at 12 volts we need a way to charge those batteries so we have this big old charger and that charger will get its energy from here sure power but the second way that the charger will get its power is from the generator so you saw us put the generator in the boat it's not hooked up yet but when we hook up the generator then the charger will get its 120 volt power either from the generator or from shore power when we're plugged into shore power at a dock it'll convert that energy uh, to 12 volt power and charge up our battery bank we also have these two dc to dc chargers so these are our two boat engines, our big 120 horsepower Lehman diesel engines. They get started by one big house battery bank, which is made up of four lead acid batteries. So when these guys get started up, their alternators will make some electricity to charge up that start bank. And once this start bank is at a certain voltage, it'll put energy into these two DC to DC chargers, which will then charge these lithium batteries the house bank at a certain charging algorithm that's appropriate for lithium or a lithium charging algorithm so that's our basic system inside of there we'll have some fuses we'll have a little lynx uh, distributor yeah i think that's pretty good i'm not a professional but i've consulted with some professionals and uh that's like an oversimplified Can you read it? version of uh, what we're gonna do today. So here we go. One thing I forgot to add is that this charger is actually a charger slash inverter. So when we don't have shore power, we're not plugged into shore power at the dock, and we when the generator's not running, we can take 12 volt energy from these batteries. They go straight back to that charger inverter, and then they power up our AC panel. So we can get AC or 120 volt electricity through the charger inverter from the batteries even if we're not plugged in at the dock or generators not on if we're plugged into the shore power at the dock or the generator is on the 120 volt energy still flows through the charger inverter to light up the ac panel it's called the pass-through charger inverter so that's the way it's going to be wired Oh man, cleaning up all the old wires, just trying to get rid of all the wires that are just hanging that don't lead anywhere and cleaning up some of the corroded looking connections. Um, just organizing a bit. I got rid of an old battery platform here that was just completely rotting away and we'll probably modify the one on this side as well. Basically just getting ready to install our Dakota Lithium house batteries. And we also have a bunch of Victron components that we're going to install as well. So I think that's what we'll work on today. Just kind of mounting some of the Victron components, getting them in place, uh, making sure there is room for the wires to enter and exit and just kind of getting organized and see how everything is going to run, getting this platform figured out and then just starting to install the whole system. So super exciting. So let's see what we got in this package. This is probably just the Victron stuff. For this boat, obviously, we don't have any solar or anything like that, but we do need a new charger. This one actually 
crapped out on us a couple months ago. So we got a new charger slash inverter. I've never used the Victron charger slash inverter, but I've heard good things. And of course I've used their other stuff. BMV battery monitoring system with a shunt. All right, let's just go open the other stuff. There we go. We got uh, one of our Victron DC to DC chargers. Oh, our Lynx distributor. So this is something else we haven't used from Victron yet. Oh yeah. Our other DC to DC charger. All right. got everything mm, just mounted I got the DC DC chargers hooked up to the Lynx distributor which is basically just like a kind of a bus bar with built-in fuses that aren't in right now but they will be they take these big MAGA fuses to proceed any further I just got to get the batteries installed here so that I can just start hooking everything up not necessarily from the batteries but at least the batteries were are in position and I can measure cables properly and just, I don't know, they're the heart of the whole thing. So once they're in position, I can make sure everything is run off them and to each other pretty well. And uh, I'm also waiting for a few, a few pieces, some wire and stuff like that. I ripped out the old platform that was in here. It was just like kind of rotting away and stuff. And I made a little bit bigger one to hold the whole house bank. So with lithium batteries, obviously we don't need a, like a plastic container to hold them because they don't have any liquid like lead acid does. Um, but I will probably build some sort of cover. It'll probably be something like out of, um, we had some leftover marine ply, that's what we made this out of. And then I'll probably have some sort of cover out of the, the extra marine ply that we have. And it'll maybe be on hinges and come off of here straight out. And then like, I don't know, and then like a little uh, vertical surface here so that I could I could hinge it up to access the batteries and then I could hinge it back down and it'll be its own little surface or shelf or whatever to cover the batteries. And that way I could like climb over the batteries and get back here to these through holes if I ever have to and not have to worry about like, I don't know, touching across the terminals or anything like that. All right, let's get um get these things in position. We'll probably have to move some wires around still. At some point, we'll also strap them down really nicely to this whole platform. This thing is solid, it's not going anywhere. You probably turn the boot upside down. We'll make it so that the batteries won't move. So these are Dakota Lithium 200 amp hours each, and we have three of them to make up our house bank at 12 volts. I'm just so sold on lithium batteries. Like we had Dakota lithium in our camper, not quite this many amp hours, but um, it worked super, super well. So we're so glad we're making up our battery bank in the boat with them as well. And this boat, like it is not weight sensitive at all. So like, it doesn't really matter that lithium is so much lighter than AGM or lead acid, but you still get so many more usable amp hours for the size of the batteries and they are much lighter than like a 8d or whatever to just move around like that was not hard at all to get this thing down in here yeah you could probably have an extra thousand pounds on this boat and it wouldn't make much of a difference for performance or efficiency or anything like that we'll probably go like this the one two three and then obviously the other big benefit with lithium batteries is just the amount of uh life cycles you get out of them so that in itself makes it worth it for the price that they are in the long run you actually save money because you get way more life cycles out of them
such a disaster. Man, if this was a big 8D battery like a lot of these old trawlers have, forget about it. Trying to get that down here by myself would just be a nightmare. Two down, one to go. But first I gotta rerun these wires. They're in the way. Oh, one other thing. I am not a professional. If you're doing a lithium bank, take some inspiration or ideas from me, but do your own research. Make sure your system is solid. Don't trust me for every little detail. I'm not a professional. I just do my best. All right, let's rerun these wires. check it out so I actually did get a little coat of epoxy on the platform for the batteries and same thing with I built a whole lid for over the batteries that it's gonna go on some sort of hinges and I got a coat of epoxy on that as well we also ripped out this stupid air conditioning compressor that wasn't hooked up like just missing parts just I don't know we're not gonna need it in Puget Sound so took that out and we're ready to just hook up most of this electric. I cleaned up a bunch of old wires. Um, we got some ready to go. This is for like one of the DC to DC chargers from this engine. Also made up a bunch of new cables with some two watt marine wire. So this is what we're gonna be using to connect our batteries in parallel, as well as connecting them to the Lynx distributor. Um, and then also connecting between that and some of the other components. All right, let's just test these batteries and we'll make sure that they're all in, uh, they have pretty similar voltages before we connect them up in parallel. All right, 13.08, 13.08, this guy. 12.99, so less than 0.1 volts apart. All right, cool, so that's totally acceptable. You just gotta be careful not to touch any of these positive leads now that they are connected to any of the negative leads and short anything out. Here 
we go, the moment of truth. If we don't see any smokes, hear any sparks, and if the lights go on in here, then we did it right. We have one light, but that's on AC power right now. All right, should we do it? Oh, yes. We're officially hooked up to our lithium bank. Do you what? That's so fast. Do you smell any smoke? Why would you ask me that question? <laughs> now I'm going to smell it all the time. <laughs> Wait, you did it? Uh, well, it's not complete. We still have to hook up the eight, like this is the battery charger inverter. And so we still have to hook up the AC power so that we can get, like if we're at the dock, shore power goes into the charger and then charges the batteries. Or if we're not at the dock, then the inverter, which is the same unit, takes the energy from the batteries and then gives us AC power to our panel. Does my, <laughs> I gotta clean up with some wires. Does my whole system look as neat as I see some people's on Instagram and? <laughs> Why, it looks so neat. Don't degrade yourself. Pat yourself on the back. I did my best. So we'll have to, uh, I'm gonna do a little hole saw through here so that these can sit nice and flush down here and then we'll put the cover over and then the cover will protect all the batteries and terminals and everything. I'm so impressed. Are you really? And then we have a cover for that thing and then this thing has a cover too. And then we'll get everything cleaned up and all the wires nice and organized and hung properly. Is this next step hard? What next step? Hooking this up? No, I just need to get a thicker gauge AC cable, I believe. Did we buy a lot of whatever it was? We don't have any right now. Oh, but why'd you say thicker as in? We didn't get any. No, we don't have thinner gauge. It's just the original charger inverter was m much thinner. So I got to run a new cable wire. Had to just cut a little half a circle for where the wires come out over there. Cables. So I have the Victron Multi Plus and all the Victron components and batteries and everything pretty much hooked up, but I have to change the Multi Plus charger to a lithium charging profile. I ran into a hiccup because the software that you need, you have to buy this little MK3 to USB unit to hook up to your laptop, and then you have to download some software and then you can do it on your lap laptop. But the software from Victron only works on Windows computers. And I have a Mac and I don't I don't have like Parallels or Wine or whatever to, to run that software, which I could get, but we brought in some backup Hello, I have a Mac as well, but luckily I have the Parallels emulator and we'll see if we can get it to work. So if you guys don't know Yuho already, him and his girlfriend Sophie are just bought a boat here in Napa Marina, a sweet Garcia. Yeah. And they sail in some pretty freaking cool but freezing cold places in the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a couple of months of boat work now though, but... We hope to get back up north uh, eventually. What kind of boat is it again? Garcia, what's the model? It's a uh, Garcia, well, it's a Nuani 43 or 46. No one really knows. <sighs> um, the, what, and what does it measure? You said you measured it, right? It measures 45 feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> But it's a nice aluminum boat. It's built in a French boatyard in the end of 80s. And the 
Americans don't really like aluminum boats, so we bought it for um, relatively cheap. And now we hope to use uh, Billy and Sierra as our example and be efficient and fast and get in and out of the boatyard as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah>. the <laughs> biggest challenge. Yeah. So these guys are, they sail up in like the Arctic. They, you guys were in, well, you're going to Alaska with this boat, but where were you? Uh, in northern Norway and uh, Svalbard. So like w way up there in the North Atlantic. Yeah. And and they like hike off the boat and go skiing and I don't know all that crazy stuff, which is cool. That's a, like not many cruisers do that kind of cool stuff off their boat. We like to wing and you kite surf too. Yeah. And we like to yeah. wing and kite surf and surf and free dive and you do that and yeah, a little bit, like a little bit of everything. I don't know. It's you have to stay active, I guess. At least try to stay active. Yeah. <laughs> Can't just go to a harbor and go straight to the bar. Yeah. Do something in between. Yeah, no bars up north anyway. So. <laughs> no success. We got close, <laughs> but we're not quite there. So thanks for Next your help, Yuho. <laughs> we'll keep messing around with it. Buy a window slap All right, Yuho left a little while ago. We had to go run an errand real quick, but I came back and I started working on it again and Check it out. We are fully charging 80 solid amps going into our 600 amp hour Dakota lithium bank. Woo! All because of this bad boy right here. I'm so excited. So like I told you guys before, like, I'm surprised it's not more clear in Victron's, I don't know, even on their forum where people are having the same issue or, or in their literature. I think if you get one of their controllers, like I think it's called the Serbo GX or something like that, I think you can do this type of stuff on that. I don't know much about it. I've never used it before. To me, it seemed like just a little bit extra that I didn't really need. Although it seems like a nice handy display and, and control and everything. Anyway, it was actually pretty simple in the end, even though I was trying to do this for a couple a couple hours the other day. You can do it on a Mac. I'm gonna make a short Toolist Tech Talk video on this, just in case anyone is experiencing the exact same problem I am. At least it's out there in the world, and if someone searches for it, they could find the simple solution. A few days later, I have everything fully installed right now. So we got our batteries under a hinged cover, all secure. We got a couple cleats on both sides, plus a big heavy duty strap and the cover securing it in place. Um, and then we got all our chargers and everything hooked up here. I think this is a great budget minded lithium system for this boat. We could have went a little more crazy and like taken full advantage of the lithium batteries, uh, high amperage charge and discharge rates that they're capable of by installing a bigger charger inverter. This one charges the battery bank at 80 amps. Um, we could have installed either bigger alternators or additional alternators onto the engine, really high output alternators like 120 amp or something, could have put on a whole serpentine kit and used external controllers for those alternators. You would also need something like a center fielder so they talk to each other um, and then that would make the DC to DC chargers kind of obsolete, but we would have much more charging capacity off the engines while they're running into the house bank. We probably could have done some other stuff as well, but all that stuff just costs so much money. And I think this is, uh, and, and it's kind of complicated too. I said, so I think this is a really good balance of um, taking advantage of uh, the bulk of what a house lithium battery bank has to offer, um, but still keeping it simple enough for this boat project for us, keeping our budget relatively in check and um, yeah, I'm really happy so far with how it's working out. So if you have any more questions about this, just uh, ask us in the comments below, let us know what you think. And um, if you wanna see any of the components we used or anything like that, we'll link everything in the description so you can check it out there. Hope you guys enjoyed.